Welcome back friends. This is the part 9 of a tutorial series. In this part we will be creating the auth controller and the auth module here. So let's use the CLI. My server is already running here. And I'll type nest g module auth. Okay, hit enter. This will create a new folder and the auth module itself. So there where is it there you go this is my auth module it is absolutely empty i'll create the service generate service auth service with no spec file don't need a spec file and next i'll create a controller the shortcut is co inside the auth module there we go so we have the service, the controller, and the module itself. So we see the provide in the providers array, we got the auth service, and in the controllers, we got the auth controller. And uh, let's also create a user entity because it will be the user who, who is going to get authenticated. So I'll go to my entity folder, create a new TypeScript file. I'll name it user dot entity dot ts and my user will have uh, let's say a few properties i'll export a class export a class user entity and the first thing you need to do is to decorate this with the entity decorator and i'll name it users this is the name of the table I intend to create in my database so the primary ID primary column or primary key will be my ID so primary generated column import it from type ORM and the columns will be the first column will be my username and the next column is the pass password um, that's a string of course and i also store the uh, salt because i will be hashing my password uh, i don't want it to keep in plain text of course so that's it and the, the reason of storing this salt is to validate the password when the user tries to authenticate without this salt you will never be able to compare the hashes because it's, it's a one-way hashing uh, mechanism and you cannot uh, reverse it okay so that's it and here in my service not to do service i need my auth service here the constructor ctor i'll inject i'm sorry not private i'll inject the repository here and I'll give the user entity here and let's name it repo repository of type user entity now I can use this repo to do stuff and before you do anything else you need to go to your auth module and inside the imports array you also need to import the type ORM module for feature and give it the user entity so it will create the table upon uh, saving so if i save the changes go back to my console everything looks good i check my dweaver database here go to the databases nestjs tables refresh i see my user table there perfect now i need to uh, Install few packages and for that I'm gonna go to the nest.js documentation here and there is a section under Security I believe for authentication. Yeah, so here you type JWT Okay, and Go here look for JWT mm. There is JWT module. 
you search here, you should get the JWT section. I might have skipped it. Okay, it should be here somewhere. There we go. So JWT functionality. Okay. Need to install these packages. Let's copy and go to terminal, paste it here. And we also need to copy the TypeScript version so that we can get the IntelliSense. And copy, paste, install. This is a dev installation. So it will only be available while we are coding, not in the production. Okay. So once that is there, we need to go here in the modules array inside the auth module and in, import the JWT module dot uh, register method here and this takes few options so the first one is your secret key you can name anything you want here okay so I'll give it a random value next the sign options the sign options will take a header algorithm. The algorithm I'll choose HS512. That's HMAC512. That's the strongest algorithm available. Expires in, I'll say one day so that I can test it. You can choose anything you want. And next, I don't think I need anything else. No, nothing else. Save the changes, right? And let's say we go to auth controller here, okay? And this is our auth route. So this will be HTTP localhost 3000 slash API slash auth. So in our auth controller, we're gonna create a method for registration registration and this will be a post request and we'll be going to register so again i will delegate the functionality the business logic to my service here my service and register user registration it will take a username string but again this is not the recommended way we'll create a dto here we'll name it uh, register user dot dto and export a class this is a dto which will take a username of type string and a password type string and both of this should not be empty and I'm using the decorators from the class validator package and the password should be min length of six characters and max length of let's say 12 and I also want this to be a, a strong password so I'll choose the matches uh, decorator here which takes a uh, regex expression inside these codes. I have a regex expression copied in my <clears throat> uh, what do you call notes here. So I'll copy that from the notes and paste it here. And if this uh, password is not strong enough, I can simply post a message that says password is too weak. Choose a stronger password between 6 and 12 characters. Okay. Save the changes. Now we can use this in our auth service. So this will take register DTO and register the DTO. Now if I go back to my controller here, so this dot registration dot okay, so this not registration this dot repo 
oh no, service i need the service so i will use the uh, constructor auth service this is dependent dependency injection and auth service dot register user which takes the dto i'll get the dto from my request body and I'll name it reg dto register dto and reg dto is here right perfect let's let's quickly give it a try and i'm just gonna uh, return the so dto to the, to the front end user as of now okay and this also needs to return something save the changes go back to postman and i'm gonna close all these tabs i'll create a new http local host 3000 and you see we are always typing this url manually so i don't want to do that i can use a, a variable here i can go to my this uh, i icon is the environment <laughs> icon and under uh current environment or under globals or maybe here i can let me add in the global a new variable with the name url initial value is http slash api okay that's it save the changes go back here and you simply type curly bracket and url slash uh, auth slash register as a post request make sure you choose post here and the body you go to form and you say i need the username get give tom and in the password don't give anything you don't send the password let's see what happens okay so see this did not give me any error you remember why we are, we are validating it here i'm sorry uh, in the to do you register user dto we are validating it here but it is still not working because in the controller we have not passed the validation pipe under the, in the pipe section so save the changes now you go back here and hit send password is too weak should be this 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 should not be empty right all right so now we go here and say one two three four five six it's a it's a very weak password i say password is too weak choose a stronger password i choose um, let's say animal at one two hit send it works and if I if I leave that username empty, username should not be empty. This is the beauty. You send it, you get it. Now we can go here uh, in the registration method. We'll import. Uh, we also need to import a package to hash the passwords. That's our bcrypt JS. Save it. You go here and save it. Okay. So now you can simply import it here in your service. In the let's import it in the service here. Import everything as bcrypt from bcrypt JS. Now here in the registration, we can simply get the username and password from the register DTO using the destructuring functionality and now what you want to do you want to uh, hash the password using bcrypt dot hash let's uh, install the typescript as well at the red types Decrypt dot hash. Okay, so it takes a salt and a string. So the string is our password, and the salt will give it a value of twelve. You can use to start with ten, and we'll say twelve rounds. 
and this will give and this is a async method okay so we'll use the await keyword here but for that we need to make this function async and once that is done we'll simply log out the hashed value okay let's see so you go here you hit send check the console so this is our hash hash password okay this this is this equals this uh, value here but before we do that we need to generate salt so const salt equals to await bcrypt gen salt bcrypt dot gen salt and we want 12 rounds Okay, and here we'll pass salt. So hit save, go back to postman, hit send. Let's see if this works. Uh, it says in legal hash length nine. Six three nine, okay. So it gets the stalled portion from a hash okay so we'll copy it here and hashed salt so you go back hit send we didn't save it did we ah 12 save no errors perfect hit send there we go we should have a salt here this is our salt okay so we'll store this salt value and we'll create a user data a user object new user entity user dot username equals to username user.password equals to hashed user.salt equals to salt and what else user.id you don't want okay so let's uh, go to our repo where is my bracket okay this dot repo dot create i want to create a user and this is the user object but this will not uh, given put an entry in the database because we need to return await this dot repo dot save and give the user entity there and since this is a this is an async operation we'll put it in a try catch statement here and in the catch block i'll simply return or throw new internal server error exception let's say let's say something went went wrong user user was not created okay let's try give it a try save these changes these changes and make sure you don't have any errors perfect go to your front end or postman and hit send there you go Okay, we are still getting the password we can fix it later but let's see the database uh, if i go in that users view data we have tom and we have the salt we have the password and now if you want we can uh, verify this password hash whenever the user tries to authenticate we'll see the login functionality in the next video because this is getting a little longer than expected so uh, please stay with me stay tuned and we'll work on the authentication part in the next next video and we also will see how we can generate a jwt token okay till then please like this video share with your friends put your comments in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if in case if you haven't done it yet thank you and have a wonderful day Bye bye